Good evening and welcome to Black Mental Health is Black Health, the first one for 2023. And we're going to talk about strengthening your core. Hmm, we'll find out just what that really is. So glad to see you here tonight. Um, and we're going to jump right in. We always get started with talking about some breathing. Why are we breathing? Of course, you're breathing, you're alive, but we want to do some deep cleansing breaths. And the reason we want to do that is the deep cleansing breath will allow you to decompress from the day, allow you just to say, whoo, and have a woo moment. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to count in slowly to four. And as I do, you'll breathe in. As I count out to four, you will have the opportunity to breathe out. And so we're gonna practice. I decided I'd come on camera for this, so let's try it. We're gonna, I want you to put your hand on your stomach if you've never done this with us before. And when you breathe in, you're going to breathe in so deeply, you will feel your stomach expand. And you'll feel it go back down when I say breathe in. So let's practice. Breathe in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. We're adding one more. In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. Just take a moment to breathe and decompress and work through whatever today may have brought. So I wanted you to just take that time to do that. So tonight, I've got a few things to talk about. I want to start off by thanking you for starting the year off with me and inviting you to share on your page um, so others can benefit from what we get from Black Mental Health is Black Health. And I'm going to give a little history since it's the new year, how we all began and how we got to where we are right now. <clears throat> Black Mental Health is Black Health started off mm, a little before COVID actually once a month, and it was called Thinking Thursday. The third Thursday is Thinking Thursday. And it was the third Thursday of every month. And we did that for a little bit, uh, just on the third Thursday. Um, and it talked about mental health. That was the thing, that was the issue. And then I was challenged and requested to go weekly. I was like, wow, that's a lot. I don't know if I have that much to say. I don't know if I know that many people to have that many guests. Well, we're going into probably our second and a half year of being every week, and it's been going well. The name was changed to Black Mental Health is Black Health at the beginning of last year. The reason being, if you were searching for some information about Black Health and saw Thinking Thursday, nothing about that title see it. Black mental health or mental health for African Americans. So I wanted to come up with a title that really encompassed what we're talking about, mental health for African Americans. Well, I always say that mental health, physical health, they're really one and the same. It's just part of our whole health. So Black mental health is just Black health, encompasses what I believe. When we um, deal with one, we deal with the other. Your mental health can, can impact your physical health and your physical health can impact your mental health. It's all just health, thus the name of the show. And so for a year, we have been Black Mental Health is Black Health. That's where we are and that's where we're gonna stay. So as again, I said, share, 
invite others to come along in this journey with us so they can see what we see and they'll know what we see and it can just um, reach more people. So this year I've been thinking about what kind of things we might be able to uh, talk about. I want to once a month have a health segment, a physical health. Again, they're not separate, but we'll focus on physical health. Some of the things like diabetes, Alzheimer's, um, what numbers you need to know. You hear about knowing your numbers as um, uh, in terms of your physical health. So what numbers do you need to know and what do they mean? How do you talk to your PCP, your primary care physician? What are some things you should do when going to the doctor? And these will be headed up by physicians or people in the field, like the Diabetes Week. I want to have some diabetes trainers to come on. I've talked to a physician to deal with Alzheimer's, to know your numbers, and talk to your PCP. So we'll have some actual medical professionals, as we have in the past, to come and talk about their specialty. We haven't talked about ADHD, and I think that's something that we really need to, so that's another topic. Gardening. There is so much benefit from gardening, and when you look at everything going on now, we need to um, source our own food anyway. I have tried unsuccessfully, but I'm going to continue to try to garden. I have a purple thumb. Some people have a green thumb. I have a purple thumb. Not even brown, because at least dirt is brown. Mine just, mm. I'm not giving up. I am going to try again this year. We definitely will address social justice issues um, and things like suicide prevention. I will probably continue each month, whatever that awareness month is. We'll have someone on talking about that. But we will just continue doing what we're doing. If you have ideas for topics, drop them, drop me a line. Um, you can DM me or put it in the chat and say, hey, I'd like for you to talk about XYZ because I want to know more about it. Awesome. Do that for me. I will be happy to um, <clears throat> I'll be happy to hear you. So <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me know what you might think is an important issue in our mental health. I'll also continue to um, just look at so many things. And I believe, and we're going to talk about tonight, that we need to address our physical, mental, spiritual, and financial well-being. And so over the course of the year, we will continue to address those issues. Um, and tonight, by way of overview, we're going to talk about all of those because they are so important. What if, you know? What's important about our physical, mental, spiritual well-being? So tonight, I want to talk about our core. You know, I was talking to some people and um, last week, and we were talking about you know your core, strengthening your core, and it is so important to strengthen your core um, in terms of exercise. You know, sitting up, right. Um, sitting up and having your balance and that core is so important to your body. You know, your core exercises when we're learning to do them, uh, train the muscles in your core to work in harmony. This leads to better balance and steadiness and stability. Stability is important whether you're on the playing field, outside doing athletics or just walking around. It's For athletes, it's one of the most important things. We have that strong core and be stable. As you get older, you want to work on your core. You know, people who get older, you may lose your balance. You may fall. You may have these issues. As you're strengthening your core, you're going to be stronger and better. So, yes, core is so important. But tonight, I want us to look at core from a different point of view. And what we're going to do is look at... Um, I think this is going to give us the right one. We're going to look at core from the point of view of um, spirituality, spiritually, physically, financially, and mentally. Hmm. And the areas of core we're going to look at are commit, overcome, relationship, and excitement. Hmm. So C for commit. O for overcome, 
R for relationship, and yes, E for excitement. So we're going to look at what kind of core do we need in all of these areas, because yeah, we need to work on our core in all of them, and we're going to look at that. So let's look at spiritually for that C. Oh, wow. Hold on. Commit. So let's start off with spirituality. Commit. From a Christian perspective, Psalms 37, 5 through 7, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will give you the desires of your heart, is what the next verse says. Commit. Be committed. Find out what your spiritual core is and commit to it. Not just haphazard, but be committed to it. Overcome. Little children, you are of God. You are from God and have overcome them. For he who is greater, he who in you is greater than he who is in the world. You know, we've all had a lot of stuff happen in life. From a spiritual point of view, understanding you're an overcomer and you can overcome things that have happened in your life. Relationship. From a spiritual point of view, when we talk about relationships, we're talking about, a in this case, a relationship with God. First uh, Peter 4, 8, above all things, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sin. So that's a relationship just with other people. Forgive and love. Hmm. Forgive and love are two hard things to do. But boy, it frees you up when you're able to do it. Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That relationship is a relationship with God. And the last one is excitement. Nehemiah 18, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't be afraid to experience joy. You know, um, sometimes people feel like they shouldn't even be able to have joy, be able to um, feel good things. I say, I poo-poo that thought. We need to be able to experience joy. It's important. So yeah, joy. Experience joy. Just have that joy. And it does give you strength. As you feel more joy, you're, you're more invigorated and you can do more things. So yeah, our for spirituality, these are our things for our core. Physically, hmm, we already talked about core being a physical thing. However, what are those things we're going to look at for core here? Let's see. Commit. Hmm. Can you commit to a healthier lifestyle? Stop and think for a moment. Now, maybe you have a perfectly great lifestyle and there's no room for improvement. Mm, we all have room for some improvement, even if you're living a great, healthy lifestyle. But under physically, when we're working on our core this year, commit to a healthier lifestyle. Now take baby steps. Don't try to change everything at one time. Start in one area. Maybe you're going to eat differently, move more, sleep more, and just move forward in life. If you live a healthy lifestyle, be committed to maintaining it and making it even better. When I think about eating, even that you might want to break down. Maybe your eating is out of control. Maybe you're a fast food junkie and you're not ready to give that up, but you want to be healthier. Then you think about what you're eating when you eat out. Well, it's just one person. It's just me. So it's a ways to cook. These are things I've heard. Why should I cook? I could just go grab something. But when you're grabbing something, are you grabbing something healthy? So maybe it's not you're, you're not ready to cook, but can you start eating healthy even when you go out? Moving more. We're going to have someone talk about the importance of moving um, and what it does to our body. If you're not ready to get out there and walk that marathon or go walk five blocks, can you move in your house? Can you get up and move to a song once a day? Put on something that's upbeat and five minutes a day move? 
and then move it to twice five minutes a day, three times five minutes a day, and then maybe get out and walk. I'm going to get out and just get out there and I'll walk a little bit. Can you do that? Can you keep it, make it easy? Baby steps. Are you getting enough sleep? We'll probably hit on that again this year. The importance of sleep and rest. Are you getting enough sleep? Maybe you have to change when you go to bed. Um, as we get older, our need for the amount of hours changes, but our need for sleep doesn't change. You will find when you get enough rest, you're able to think more clearly the next day when you get enough rest and sleep. Our body is rejuvenating overnight when we sleep. So get some sleep, commit to a healthier lifestyle. Our O is for overcome. Overcome things that you perceive as obstacles. And the reason why I say you perceive it sometimes we decide something's an obstacle. And because we make that decision, it is. The serenity prayer that you hear related to Alcoholics Anonymous is really for everybody. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So when we're looking at obstacles in our way, are there things we can change? If it is, you want the courage and wisdom to change them. If it's not, you need to move around it, not keep bumping your head against it, and realize it's not an obstacle, even if I can't change it. I need to go around it. I need to do something different. There are things we need to overcome physically in our lives. Um, that when you think about the obstacles related to physical are there reasons you don't exercise? Well, I'm too tired. Well, hmm, exercising might give you more energy. You know, I had a workout buddy and they moved. We'll find a new one. What are the obstacles to you changing your life physically? I would eat healthier, but it's too hard. Get an accountability partner, get a buddy and you cook together. Overcome the perceived obstacles to physical change. I would go to, go to the gym, but I can't afford it. Like I said, put on a song, move around your house, walk down your street. Well, my neighborhood is dangerous. Work out in your home. And that doesn't have to cost any money. Put on YouTube. YouTube has a video for everything. You can find, I've, I've shared this before. I don't like yoga. My body don't want to do all that. So one day I got on YouTube and I looked up. Yoga for fat people. It was a young girl, heavy set, and she was working it. She was moving it. So then I put yoga for old people, old fat people. And guess what? Something came up and I tried it. So it doesn't cost any money. If you are watching this, you have access to the internet. So get on YouTube and uh, figure that one out. So we have our commit, our overcome relationship. What about physically? Um, enhance positive relationships and eliminate negative ones. There are people in your physical space who may or may not need to be there. And that's a hard one to realize there are some people, maybe you're in a toxic relationship and it doesn't just mean male-female relationship or just dating relationship. Maybe you have people in your life who are not healthy for you, then maybe you need to move on. Now, if you're in a committed relationship, you want to maintain that. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. If you um, enhance your relationships, eliminate the negative ones. Physically move to another space sometimes in relationships because that's not the relationship. That's not the person who you need to be in proximity of. That's a hard one. But yeah, that is what you need to do. Um, excitement. If you're making. Um, positive changes in your physical health, be excited about it. At attitude, some say, is 80% of making change happen. You have to believe it to achieve it. If your attitude is, okay, I gotta go work out. Let me get up, okay. Let me set my time. I'm only doing it 10 minutes. Okay, so you set it for 10 minutes and that's your attitude about it. Well, gee, it's not gonna make you wanna maintain it. If your attitude is one of excitement, 
I get to move for 10 minutes. Who knows? I might go 11 a day. I'm moving because it's going to make my blood flow better. It's going to make me feel better. The more I move, the better I feel. Yeah, I'm moving. And you're excited about it. And if you, even if you have to fake it and you have to tell yourself, I love moving, even though inside you're like, oh, I don't like this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. You tell yourself, and after a while, you will become excited about being physically active. So you're going to build your physical core by committing to a healthy lifestyle, overcoming perceived obstacles to becoming physically healthy, enhance your relationships by seeing who you are in physical proximity to, and maintain some excitement, believe it, to achieve it, and be excited about the change you're going to make physically. Be excited about what you're going to put in your mouth different, difficult, differently. Okay, I'm not going to have that Reese's anymore, but I have one a month. And be excited, waiting for that day, you're going to get that one a month. But find reasons to be excited. Excited because you're making changes for your own life. Ooh, what about financial health? Huh. Hmm. Who wants to talk about finances? Mine are good. Mine are great. Mine are this. Hmm. Let's just see. What about our core for finances? Commit to saving. I've heard some interesting things lately about people and saving. Uh, from I don't uh, I don't save because I get paid every other week, so money is always going to come back. So I just spend it. Not a good healthy attitude about money. Commit to saving, even if it's just five dollars a paycheck, even if it's only five dollars a month. Do something. So some ways to make that happen: if you have a bank account, open another one, and have money automatically withdrawn from your account on payday. What that means is it just goes there and you don't even think about it. It's just, boom, it's there, it's there, it's there. You don't see it. It comes out before you know it. It's not part of anything you do. Pay yourself. Be committed to, um, be committed to you. Save for the future. Plan for a rainy day. It has been said that you should have six months worth of savings. And it may take a minute to get there so that if anything happens, you can take care of yourself. If you live for the moment, there may become a moment you can't live financially. So commit to saving. Commit to paying yourself. Figure out what you can do and do it. Um, let's look at some others. Overcome. If you have debt, develop a plan to minimize and eliminate it. If you have an unhealthy relationship with money, own it and seek help to remedy it. You know, some people have thousands, tens or hundreds of thousand dollars worth of debt. There's student loan debt, there's credit card debt. There is so much debt we can have. And there are lots of plans out there to eliminate debt. One is called the snowball effect. If you have lots of little things you need to pay off, such as credit cards or all these little bills, you take the small one and you pay it off first. You aggressively you don't pay the minimum. You pay over and over. You get it. You get it caught up. And all your other ones, you are paying little by little on. And the money that you were using to pay this one, that extra money you're putting, now you put it into the next one and you pay it off. And once it's paid off, you put it in the next one until you eliminate debt. Slowly but surely. The opposite of that, and I forgot the name of it, is where you start with the big one. Whatever your largest debt and you pay it down, you pay it off, and then you go and you work your way down. That one, is, for some people, feels harder because that big one is so big. And then these will never get paid down. So what works for you? Be realistic. But pick a bill, pay it off, one. And that same money, put it here. And then so on and so on. And you begin little by little um, and you get it paid off. Overcome that debt. You don't have to stay in debt and live in debt. You don't have to. And the other part of that is stop creating debt. If you can't, um, you know, you don't have to go and charge everything. You don't have to go out to eat um, every week. Go to the grocery store. Well, I can't cook. Well, 
buy a cookbook <laughs> or do something. I use the food one because that's one I hear a lot. Or I just had to have this outfit. Why? Well, I was going to this event and, you know, I just really had to have something new. And nothing was, I didn't see anything on sale. Did you look? So if you have to have something new, maybe go to a resale shop, especially if you're one who, well, once I wear it, I'm not going to wear it again. Not maybe something special because I see the same people and they can't see me in the same dress. Like they're really going to remember? Mm, no. Um, but think about ways to overcome that debt by not letting it grow. Relationship. Assess your relationship with money. Learn ways to let it grow and work for you instead of you working for it. What do I mean by relationship with money? How do, what do you think about money? How do you feel about money? When you think about money, what do you think? Is it, it's just something to go through your fingers? And for a lot of us, it goes through without us thinking about it. Well, I gotta go get this, I gotta go get this. And you don't have a plan. What is your relationship with money? Hmm, that's a rough one. We don't often think about um, money and relationship, but we do have a relationship. Everybody has a relationship with money. Some of us have a healthy one. Some of us have an unhealthy one, but we all have some relationship with money. Learn ways to let it, uh, learn ways to make it work. Learn ways to have that health relationship. The healthy relationship will include saving. It will include tithing, giving to others. Can you find 10% to give? And maybe you don't have, maybe not to you, I can do whatever, I can't do that. But can you give and to someone else? Can you commit to, if you're at a place of worship, tithing there, tithing to an organization, but giving something back, the more you give, the more you receive. So can you give? Can you be a giver? Can that be part of your relationship that your money is designed to be to do good things? Can you donate to a nonprofit? Can you donate to a child's fund to go to a school? Hmm. What can you commit to? Excitement. Um, Set a goal for something you want to do financially. It might be a big goal. And it can be just something fun, but have a goal. Maybe the goal is I'm paying off all of my debt. And inside of that, you're going to have the mini goals to get to the big goals. And then you're going to celebrate those milestones as you, um, as you make that mini goal. When I talked about the um, snowball with the bills, you're going to pay the little one. It's done. It's over. Now I'm going to go pay the next one. It's done. It's over. I made it five ten, And every time I get one milestone, I'm going to celebrate. Now, the celebration doesn't have to cost you any money. It may be I'm just going to go hang out with friends. Or maybe I will do a little something. But set mini goals and be excited about it. Oh, I got all this debt. I don't know what to do. Ah, the other reframe is, I'm so excited that I'm about to be out of debt. It might take me all year, but I can do it. I am moving forward. I'm getting out of debt. Maybe it means you, maybe getting out of debt and working on your financial core is something you cannot do by yourself. Makes sense. None of these um, we can do by ourselves. Uh, maybe you can't get... Um, I find maybe I can't afford to go to a financial plan. I already have money issues. Another thing you might do is go to half price books and search for books on financial planning, financial literacy. Get back on the internet. We know you have internet. You're here. Search financial literacy. Look for people that you, you know, that are well known. You don't want to get some fly by night, somebody that just wants your money, but look for books. And the names are escaping me right now, who I wanted to tell you, but there are some great people who talk about um, Les Brown, for instance. Yes, people who talk about finances. Read their books. I don't like reading books on audiobooks, but. Um, or, you know, subscribe to certain blogs, podcasts by reputable people who talk about how to be healthy financially. Don't try to do it alone. It is way too hard. 
Mentally, yeah. We saved this one for last because our mental health is what we're all about. But you'll see, I'm going to go back through and we'll see how all of these impact our mental health. So when it comes, what are you going to commit to? Commit to making your mental health a priority. Acknowledge that mental health is, I acknowledge that mental health is something you need to take care of and care for it in all aspects of your life. You know, we've talked about how we don't make, in general, don't make mental health a priority. You'll go to the doctor periodically to take care of your physical health, but mental health, oh no. As a matter of fact, if there are issues in your mental health, we'll find other things to say. It's just, you're not depressed. It's just demonic possession. You're not depressed because Black people don't get depressed. You're not depressed because dot, dot, dot. We think of all the reasons where we are just not depressed. That child doesn't have, uh, mm -mm, there is something called disruptive, dysregulated mood disorder. And that's where a child, a young person is overly sensitive. And yes, they are out of control in how it looks. And so we'll say, they just bad. They just need that butt beat. No, it really is a mental issue. And they have issues regulating their mood. And it comes out angrily. Uh, that's not real. And that's just made up. But when we make our mental health, when we commit to make our mental health a priority, we commit to knowing that it's real. It's real and it might need help. And we can all need help with it, but make, you know, commit to it, make it real. What can we overcome? Don't be a victim of your past. If things have happened that have not gone well, you can overcome them. You may need help, and that's what therapy comes in. But yeah, we said spiritually, you're more than an overcomer. With God's help, with your therapist's help, with your friend's help, you can overcome your past. Part of overcoming things um, has to do with forgiveness too. Man, I said earlier, forgiveness is so hard. I can't forgive them. Mm. Forgiveness is a choice. And when you want to overcome your past, sometimes it means forgiving those who hurt you. Because here's the thing. Yes, they hurt you. They did something wrong. And you know what? They are going on with their life. Are they worried about whether they hurt you? Mm -mm. They have moved on. And you're being held prisoner by the anger and the unforgiveness you have. It's not helping you. And it's not hurting them. So, yeah, if you want to overcome um, some mental challenges, physical, phys um, forgiveness can be a part of it. Not let, letting yourself be a victor and not a victim of issues, but it takes help. That's where it's going to take some help to overcome some mental health challenges. That's what therapy is for. Relationship. Hmm. You know what relationship is most important? You need to work on, not with other people, with yourself. When you think about mentally, whether you're super mental healthy or not, work on your relationship with yourself. Are you comfortable spending time with yourself? Now, COVID did some interesting things, the shutdown part of COVID, did some interesting things with people in a relationship with themselves. For some, shutdown made people still, I'm not ready to just go out. You know, people are so this. I don't even know if I like people anymore. Really? Or I had to look at me for me and I didn't like what I saw. So now I'm just ignoring that. Oh, wow. Not good either. So I'm going to go out and be around people, 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 because I can't stand being by myself. So either extreme is not good where I can't stand being by myself or I want, only want to be by myself. The extremes, never good. But if when you have a healthy relationship with yourself, you're able to um, enjoy yourself. You're able to see your flaws and your, um, your shortcomings and your greatness. You're able to understand that you may have mental health challenges and you're willing to work on it and you're willing to overcome what um what may have happened in your uh, in your past 
So work on your relationship with your, yourself. You are the only you God gave, made in this world. So love the you that you are. There is not another you. Even if you're identical twins, you still this person here and this person there. Learn to love the you who you are. There's not another you. You're worthy of loving yourself. If you don't love you, why should anybody else? Excitement. Mm -hmm. As you make your mental health a priority, spend time doing things that bring you joy. Maintain a positive attitude and experience, maintaining a positive attitude and experiencing joy can boost your mental well-being. You know, if you walk around, today's going to be a bad day. I just feel it. I don't think anything good is going to happen today. Well, if you wake up and you say that, <clears throat> That's going to color your day. But if you wake up, okay, I got this. I know I'm looking at it. There's some challenges ahead, but I'm coming into this day with excitement. And I'm going to find something good in it. I, it's going to be hard. It may be hard, but I got this. And you have a sense of positive expectation. You want something good to jump off. You, um, you um, want it to happen. And so you do it. Because you decide that I'm going to be excited about it. Just think about how you feel when you are thinking negative thought. It weighs down on you physically and mentally. So find something to be excited about. And I will grant you, sometimes we are in a position in life, in a season in life, there is, it seems like there's nothing good. And you're not even excited about waking up the next morning and breathing. You're not excited because truly at that moment, life sucks. Maybe you're in a transition and everything is, seems to be going wrong. Find if you have a spiritual base and have a relationship with God, find excitement in the fact that, God, you better get me through this and I know you are. Our excitement in life for our mental well-being may not be all the time over the top, yay. But let it be that one little thing that you're excited for, no matter how large or how small, that one thing that you can say, okay, about this, I am excited. And find that one thing that makes you feel excited and makes you feel good. Mm, so important. So let's look at our call to action. Be willing to work on your core. And remember, our core is commit. Find something to commit to. Commit to something that's going to make you a better you, whatever that is. Believe that you can overcome obstacles from your past and present. Develop uh, positive, healthy relationships. And if you have to let go of some, oh, well. If they're not healthy, they might as well go anyway. And find excitement in life. Find something, no matter how large or how small, to be excited about. And that excitement and that joy can go a long way. And always, 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 I'm going to say, be an educated voter. Your vote matters. And you may say, why are you saying that now? We're not in an election cycle. Well, you don't want to wait until an election cycle to be an educated voter. Find out what's going on in your neighborhood, in your city, in your county, in your state, and nationally. What is going on? Do you know what's going on in Congress right now? I'm not going to tell you. Let me tell you. Go look. Check out Speaker of the House. If you don't know, I want to challenge you to go find it. As of five o'clock today, we still don't have one. Now, I don't know what has happened since then, but find out the ramifications of them not voting to have one and how that impacts you. So often when it comes to politics, we think these things don't impact us. I will say this about not having a Speaker of the House means nothing can go on in Congress. Bills can't be passed, nothing can happen. Having the wrong person means that bills can be blocked. So it's important. Be an educated voter and know what it means in your life. Because whoever you vote in can make it, can impact you. So as we look at 
our core. We want to strengthen that core, strengthen our ability to be committed, to overcome our obstacles, to have positive relationships and be excited about life. So yeah, this is where we're going this year. So it is my goal that we have a great year. I want to see you every Thursday here that we're here. And let's just work on making this a great year. Because after all, Black mental health is Black health. I am Bronwyn Lucas, licensed professional counselor, and I'm here to help you become a better you. If you need help, need therapy, reach out. I am not the therapist for everybody. If I'm not for you, I will help you find someone who can help you achieve that better mental health and strengthen your core. See you next week. Bye now.